Hello, this is David Hilser. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you are not science woke, then this is the place for you. There are literally thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world who have been working for decades outside the mainstream, who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and who are proposing new theories and models. You're not going to find anything like this on YouTube, so I want to make sure you go down below, click on the subscribe button, the little bell next to it, you'll be alerted to when our next video drops. Thank you all you, all you new subscribers, I keep gaining them every day. I appreciate it. Spread the word because this is the only place where we talk about things like this. And that is on one of my videos where I talked to in the 10th anniversary of the anniversary of the Large Hadron Collider. And the silence around that is because they don't produce anything for humankind. But some people beg to differ. But this is interesting because it started me thinking about why I need to talk about the book I'm going to talk about. In fact, this is not going to be the only video on it because it is going to be one of the books that you need to read uh, on my must-read list. I, uh, here's uh, Pyro314. I think what bothers me is you mock their theories as unicorns. Why can't your system be called infinite unicorns made of tinier unicorns? Why go forward that way? It's interesting that they know, notice that uh, the particle model my dad and I work on is, is based on infinity, just like um, on Borkin's affinities. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. That's a good question, easy answer. The standard models invented and they confirmed it in a completely suspect way. Dr. Alexander Unsker describes quite well in his Higgs fake book. In our particle model and other ether models, we look forward to evidence and real physical models for things instead of arbitrary package for arbitrary attributes. Again, a direct quote from Dr. Alexander Unsker. I will do a video answering this question because it points out that until a person really investigates new models, this statement seems illogical. But if you were to study new models and their scientists, you will see the difference. Of course, you need to know a little bit about what's happening with the current model as well. The standard model says, well, nice story, except we've learned a ton from particle colliders. Again, this is from the video. If you haven't seen the video, go right here. I have a link right there. Uh, and these are the comments from this video on the Large Hadron Collider uh, a little while back that I made. And of course I came back and I again mentioned, and this will tell you why I'm doing this video, uh, the only problem is that the standard model isn't based on invention. Again, same thing. They're supposedly finding those inventions using signals. See the Higgs fake by Dr. Alexander Unsicker? It is a bad system based on bad scientific methods. Again, if you don't read the Higgs face, you fake, you are doomed to simply repeat what you are told. And that's what people do. So um, again, this now has officially become a book that everyone has to read. Now look at this book. It's really thin. I mean, it only has like um, 137 pages. It's in big print. Not a whole lot of pictures. In fact, I don't think there are any pictures. But there's lots of space in it, too. You can see I've marked it up myself. But what I did is I got the electronic version, the ebook version, so I can show you. And so I'm going to go through part of this book today and just show all of you, those of my subscribers that talk about unicorns, why this is a unicorn world. Well, Alex Alexander Unsker talks about it quite clearly. And in, in his preface, he says why this had to be said. And this is talking about his book, which is, gets pretty good reviews actually on Amazon um, because that's unusual for a book that is tearing into uh, physics but I also noticed they had people who consider themselves uh, people who are into theoretical physics the uh, five star went down to 3.6 whereas the general public it's up there much higher than that so uh, in the, the 2013 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded very soon after the announcement of the discovery of a new particle at a press conference in CERN on July 4th 2012 and this, is, this whole book is a response to that. The breaking news caused excitement worldwide, yet the message conveyed to the public as if something had happened, like finding a gemstone among pebbles, is if we take a sober look at the facts, at best, an abuse of language, at worst, a lie. He's saying that the announcement of the Higgs boson is at worst, abuse of language, I mean, at best, abuse of language, at worst, a lie. What had been found by the researcher did not resolve a, sing, a single one of the fundamental problems of physics. Yet it immediately uh, was immediately declared the discovery of the century. Whether this claim f is fraudulent, charlatanry, charlatanry, uh, or just thoroughly foolish, we may leave aside. So. 
this is the beginning of the book. You can see why he's writing the book uh, because of this incident of the Higgs particle being discovered and then the consequently getting the Nobel Prize. He says, I shall argue that particle physics as practiced since 1930, okay, 1930 folks, it's a while back, is futile, is a futile enterprise in its entirety. Okay, this is a extremely intelligent guy, Dr. Alexander Unskirt, who is a physicist, who is saying this? He's from Germany. Of course, you know, if you're a German physicist, that's where Einstein came from. So you have bigger brains. You're smarter than all of us. <laughs> of course, I'm being sarcastic. Uh, indeed, physics, after the groundbreaking findings at the beginning of the 20th century, has undergone a paradini di uh, paradynamic, no, that's not what it says, paradigmatic change that has turned into another science, or better, a high tech sport. That's so good. That has little to do with the laws of nature. Now, this is a person, again, talking about particle physics. All right, the standard model. The one that, oh, I'm talk, t calling a unicorn. Well, if he says we should throw it out since the 1930s, yeah, it's pretty much a unicorn world. All those particles, you're saying throw them out. They don't exist. Um, it is not uncommon in history for research to follow a long dead ends, such as geocentric ast astronomy or the overlooking of the continental drift. Of course, I'm not, I don't think he subscribes to expansion tectonics, but, you know, he's talking about plate tectonics, which we ourselves, myself, in the critical thinkers, if you really look into it, you will find out the earth is expanding. But again, he's using some uh, analogies that are often the seemingly necessary Sari solutions to problems after decades of piling assumptions on top of each other gradually turn into something that is ludicrous from a sober perspective. I don't know how much more you you can, uh, how do you say, criticize. This guy is no holes bar. And not only that, there's enough readers that this has an overwhelmingly positive review on Amazon with almost 60 reviews. That's quite amazing since it lays into the standard model. Andrew Pickering and David Lindley have lucidly pointed out the shortcomings, failures, and contradictions in particle physics in much detail, providing between the lines and a devastating picture. Now, I have not read this, so this is something you guys can do. Here is some more books and some more authors to read about if you are one of those things that we have learned. Um, what is it? Uh, we're on slides. Like, let's go back to this one. Nice story, except we've learned a ton from particle colliders about unicorns we have. Okay, uh, though their conclusions may not be different from mine, I cannot take the detached perspective of a science historian. I cannot take the detached perspective of a science historian. Uh, historian. It annoys me too much. This is really a great, I mean, this book is very thin, but it's just chock full of amazing things that he says, Alexander Underscore says. It annoys me, too, and this is great, one of the great sentences from the book. It annoys me too much to see another generation of physicists deterred by the dumb, messy patchwork called the standard model of particle physics, physics that hides the basic problems uh, physics ought to deal with. Sort of like, what is light? What is gravity? Why is the Earth expanding? Why does it gain mass? Because that has to happen probably at the subatomic uh, level. What are electromagnetic fields? You know, things like that. But <laughs> amazing. Great. Got to read this book, Physic, the Physic Higgs Fake. That's what we're doing. And I will be doing more videos on this. A must read, a must read, a must read. Therefore, I shall be very explicit in this book. It is written for the young scholar who wants to dig into the big questions of physics rather than dealing with a blend of mythology and technology. I'll tell you, these are just gem after gem after gem. This is just in the preface. Preface. It should demonstrate to the majority of reasonable physicists that the, that the high energy subsidiary is something they would be better getting rid of because it doesn't meet 
their standards. It means just saying, get rid of theoretical particle physics. Get rid of it. All scientists who maintain a healthy skepticism towards their particle colleagues should be encouraged to express their doubts and the general public, many of whom intuitively felt that the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I cut these parts off and I, I only, I mean, I could read this. I mean, that's my problem. I can't read it all, so it's good that I can. But basically, it's saying we should have a healthy skepticism toward part of our particle colleagues and be encouraged to express their doubts. Okay? Very important. You gotta read it yourself. My goodness, like ebooks are so cheap now. You can read it on your phone. Uh, needless to say, this book will hardly appeal to particle physics physicists and not even even lay much of a basis they will wish to discuss. He's saying there's nothing here that there is going to that they even really want to discuss. There's no way to convince an expert that he or she has has done nonsense for 30 years. Great. Over the decades, high-energy physicists have been hunting for ever rarer events just to declare a new par uh, as new particles everything they did not understand. I'm going to get into the, the details of this. Not in this one, but uh, in my next video. I'm going to get into the very details of how they go about that. I, well, actually, don't go away because I will talk about that a little bit because I get it from his book. But I won't talk about the, the real details, but the overall general way they do particle physics. Much more than in any other uh, field, uh, field of physics, on trust in expert opinions, one might even say parody. And he talks about that. Uh, I don't care too much about the public money being wasted. We live in a rotten world. This is so true. And... Um, I absolutely agree with Alexander. I think a lot of critical thinkers. Obviously, I have a lot of people here who are critical thinkers politically, economically, um, uh, and scientifically, and um, racially. All of those things. Well, a lot of progressives out there and the progressive thoughts. Uh, and we live in a rotten world where billions of dollars are squandered on bank bailouts. Yep. While every 10 seconds a child dies of hunger, we, are, we consider ourselves, we build the Large Hadron Collider, and we can't even feed our own people on this planet. It's ridiculous. Um, but the worst thing about the standard model of particle physics is the stalling in the intellectual progress of humankind it has caused. We need to get rid of that junk to evolve further. This is the unicorn world I'm talking about. So I am doing this, Mr. Pyro1314, and I appreciate it. I'm not here to get mad at you. I'm here to try to teach. I'm your science therapist and uh, who needs therapy themselves, who are spreading a lot of themselves here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, he's calling it junk. Throw it out since uh, uh, all the stuff since 1930, which happens to be right when the neutrino was. So maybe I, hey, Alexander Unzerker, are you with me? And Neutrino doesn't exist as well. How to read this book. This is really great. My aim is to teach you to pass from a piece of dis disguised nonsense to something that is patent nonsense. This is a quote he gets from scientists or philosophers. So how to read this book. So he gets these quotes out by Ludwig Wittgenstein. Wittgenstein, Wittgenstein. So my aim is to teach you to pass from a piece of distinguished nonsense, is what he's calling particle physics in this case, to something that is patent nonsense. That is, oh, you have, an, you have your opinion that they're unicorns, and why isn't yours unicorns? Well, one of the things is when I say in the beginning of my Every video, I say there are literally thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world, meaning not in one country, but in almost 80 countries that we have in our database, who have been working for decades, decades, mm -hmm. outside the mainstream, who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and who are proponing new... Folks, we've looked at this stuff. The reason this stuff, we do this stuff and we come up with new models is because we've looked at the bad stuff right here. And Alexander Unsker in The Higgs Fake... You must read the very short book. Get it. Read through it. 
but I'm helping you out here. I'm your science therapist because I know you're probably driving on your way home and this is like an audiobook. <laughs> Should just do that. Um, chapter four, I just like this evidence schm evidence. Uh, that's uh, sort of like I think uh, comes from uh, uh, Jewish culture where you got the schm evidence, evidence sort of uh, 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 coming in there linguistically endlessly refined sieving how particle physics fool themselves. The establishment defends itself by complicating everything to the point of incomprehensibility. This is what I say in my own mean. It's not our, it's not the modern theories that are hard and paradoxical, I mean, uh, that are hard to understand. It's and seem paradoxical. It's the theories themselves that are complex and paradoxical, and we should throw them out. I didn't say that right. See my meme. <laughs> the establishment, again, read this again. The establishment defends itself by complicating everything to the point of incomprehensibility. And that's where we are at. So the history of particle physics, and this is the part um, that's worth waiting for, and I hope, I'm glad you stuck around, because this is a great, we're going to get into the high-level things of what happens at the particle physics level, why they go through and they say they do it, and they find everything. Alexander Unsker breaks it down for you for those layman people who don't know what's going on. So the history of particle physics is a characteristic sequence of events. This is just fantastic. The, par the pattern consists of developing theoretical fashions too vague to be scrutinized. Okay, that's what they do. They, they come up with th theoretical, he doesn't even call them theories, sort of fashions, and, and they're really vague. And they're too big, vague to be scrutinized. You can't put them down in paper. You can't even put symbols to them. Uh, then number two, letting particle collide, collide, particles collide in accelerators and build big ones. And they're now thinking of building an even bigger one. So that's their second thing they do. They let particles collide in accelerators, declaring every outcome that is poorly understood as the discovery of the fashionable uh, of a fashionable new particle. So they, they're smashing things together and they see, oh, look at this is a different pattern. We've never seen this before. So now we consider that a new particle. Uh, I won't even talk about that right now because in my opinion, even the way particles are smashed together, uh, just because you see something like that, there's so many assumptions that you would imagine that this one kind of thing is because there's a new particle. It just Anyways, the fourth step, filtering that particle in the next round of experiments as background. So now that we have this one that goes, Ew! and it's really rare because we've, we've looked at millions and millions, and we look at this rare event as if like, oh, here it is, there's another thing. Then what do we do is now we can declare that Ew! out of the billions and hundred million collisions, the one we see as, oh, it's a new particle, name it as somebody, get a Nobel Prize. Next. He says, and then you take and filter out that because in the next round of experiments, that's now background. We, we now have given out the Nobel Prize. We now know that this particle is forever blessed. The top quark has been found. The 900 scientists who wrote down how to find it and the signals that they found, which are totally suspect, which I'll get into in another video, but we're only talking at the high level. Well, that's now background news, old news. Anyway, he's got his, he got his Nobel Prize. Where's mine? So we're going to filter him out. Old news. See what comes up. And then they go back and it says background. So they filter out his background uh, to, at, at the next time they, they find their new particle. And five, doing another experiment based on the very same idea, but at higher energy. Okay, so in case the, ener uh, the energy until you don't understand something, and so on. In in increase the energy until you don't understand something, and so on. It is a rat race. This is the way particle physics is done for those people who are not into the actual technical part. This is what they do. All right, chapter five, the big parroting. This is really interesting because... This comes back to, uh, we're on side 12, make sure I get back. This is a nice story, but we've learned a lot, a ton from particle colliders. Is this because Pyro 314 has read the Higgs fake and says, no, this stuff is really good, looks at the real the model itself and says, oh, it makes total sense, and that oh, we've learned that. No, what they are doing is parroting, and this is a real problem. Um, this is how incestuous experts' opinions 
spread. Few are able to calmly pronounce opinions that dissent from the prejudice of the environment. Most are even incapable ever to reach such opinions. That is, they don't even know where or even find where they could criticize anything. And who said this? Albert Einstein, which we know relativity has a lot of problems. A lot. Special relativity, throw it out. General relativity, throw it out because it doesn't work where it's supposed to. See, um, well, I hope I put that. If I don't uh, put that link in there, um, this is for um, uh, Dr. Edward Doughty in one of my, my most popular videos. Take a look at that. It's telling you about how general relativity didn't work. Predicts that it should bend outside the coronas, but it doesn't. All right, let's keep going. And um, because it is just too convincing, arguments because because imagining that tens of thousands of physics physicists have been investigating a flawed model of reality for generations is out of the question how could this be that's what people ask how could you say they're wrong this is what um um when they say oh is einstein wrong take a look at that um i guess i'm gonna have to really make sure i get these links in there here's another one that's from the my video another popular video that neil degrassi tyson says einstein can't be wrong because we have thousands of people doing stuff for decades and confirmed it millions of times well he's saying that uh the, the, because imagining tens of thousands of physicists have been investigating a flawed model of reality for generations of with is out of the question terrible unthinkable they cannot let the faintest suspicion of, the, of that kind come into their minds that, that something may be wrong. And I bet if you are honest with yourself, dear reader, the argument will co have come to your mind too. But it isn't, around, isn't sound. Not only is it dangerous, uh, dangerously circular, it is profoundly wrong. So the idea that, again, the, that these people are are working on these kinds of things and the idea that they could be working on flawed ideas for so long is just just unthinkable so this whole circular idea that well it's right because so many people are working on it uh tens of thousands of physicists so they're right how could that be wrong that in itself is just zero scientific argument and i think that's uh, the, the silent majority of us really understand that argument that's why you're here that's why you are a critical thinker at least trying to be that that's what i'm supposed to be doing here uh, the judgment about the standard model of particle physics is far far from equivocal among physicists many scientists intuitively feel that the high energy division is strange and not for them i would say that the majority have at least some serious doubt about it in spite of not being the experts, their opinion about the field is probably more substantiated than the detailed arguments of the brain, the brainwashed by their community. The, intu the intuition of physicists versus the expert opinions is what Daniel uh, Kahneman discusses in his best-selling Think, Thinking Fast and Slow, another book that you can read and another author. So basically he's saying that there's a lot of people who really intuitively feel that high energy the division of high energy physics is strange and not for them, and they would say that the majority have some serious doubt about it. That's why I'm doing this, this channel, because you people, you, my subscribers, are some of those people. Can point in this virtual world where I see a reflection of myself in the screen here. Let's keep going. We're almost there. Here's one. I love his quotes in here. It's called The Rubber Ball. When everyone thinks the same, no one is thinking. Nobody is thinking. When everyone thinks the same, nobody is thinking. Walter Lippmann. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm almost done, so that's good. My throat's getting dry. <coughs> I'm out of it there. Don't go away. Only a few more left. Particle physicists might be called experts, but mostly they are not even that. The detector specialist, the beam technician, and the guy who calculates the decays, probab decay probabilities of given particles are far from understanding each other's field, let alone the theoretical stuff. 
Again, this is why this book is so wonderful, because if you are not uh, a real super science lover and understand particle physics and how it works, <coughs> excuse me, then this book will help you out with that. And I'm going to talk about it in my next uh, version of the Higgs, my next video of the Higgs uh, fake on some of the techniques they use. But here he talks about it. The technicians involved with the Large Hadron Collider don't even know what the other ones are doing. They're just told, ah, okay, uh, do this sequentially with these programs uh, and you will be uh, get, calculating the decay probabilities for us. Not knowing what any of that means. So that's what he's trying to say. The whole system, unfortunately, allows uh, all, almost entirely relies on confidence. When you start ask, when, once you start asking questions, you get, usually, usually get, uh, you usually get a polite, uh, though superficial answer. But if you follow up on something more closely, e.g., how to remove the background or how to handle radiation damping sooner or later, you'll hit a rubber wall. What well, rubber are all arguments? We do that very carefully. Lots of people have checked that. That's been done for a long time, and so on. It's a line of defense that always works. They make you feel a little bit guilty in the same way religious people do, insinuating that it is your fault that you didn't waste part of your life dedicated, uh, dedicating your time to that nonsense. <laughs> you get, get a feeling that Alexander Unzerker doesn't that believes that this is a unicorn world like me hmm that's why i'm doing this because of the comments uh, almost done here the hearsay factor the last place on the planet where the other people think so argument can be used is science and that's what he's talking about it's like that's what that's what neil degrassi tyson's lives on neil De degrassi tyson doesn't come up with anything on his own he does if he if he he would if he was a critical thinker, if he actually thought about okay where this could be wrong and this this is, could all be all be wrong. Every scientist, every engineer who is worth anything, will always say none of these theories are going to be correct. They're some are more truthful for the uh, for, than others, but none of them. This could all be wrong. That is a true scientist. You don't say that. Uh, no, it's not wrong because other people think so. And that's what Neil deGrasse, deGrasse, deGrasse Tyson does. He says, well, of course, all those scientists, they're all right. Even Dr. Bill Lucas, who I greatly admire his work, great work. He says, well, what are you talking about, Dave? Neutrinos exist because I, I know a lot of those people, those fellow colleagues who work in particle accelerators. He uses neutrino in his because he wants to explain it he doesn't want to look at it as brilliant as he is. He doesn't want to look at the arguments of why it doesn't exist, which are very simple. And people don't like that. Again, the last place on the planet where the other people think so argument can be used is science. Great quotes in this book. Worth it. A must-read book for everybody who wants to be science woke, period. Along with the uh, Dinosaur and Expanding Earth book and... Uh, uh, any of Borkert's books on infinity or on ether or on uh, neomechanics, this book is a must read. And if for those who can't read it, I'm trying to go through uh, a lot of it. The lack of culture of discussion in the particle physics community has rarely been more obvious than in the seminar held on July 4th, 2012 in Geneva. Co going back to the beginning, of the preface where he talks about uh, the announcement of the Higgs boson. Atlas and CMS spokesperson uh, Fabioli Gionati uh, and Ice, uh, uh, Ice, I can't read, Joe uh, in, in Candela both claimed that the signal had been measured with a significance of five sigma, a mathematical cocksure number that suggests the discovery was about beyond, beyond every, any doubt. Well, the five sigma is to so many decimal places. It's so, we're so right, it goes to a five sigma. That's their lingo for. It's right on, man. It's just like, it's like a fact of the universe. And then you read later. Though I didn't even put in doubt 
uh, the statistical significance, a CERN physicist, that is, uh, he didn't, uh, uh, Dr. Alexander Unsker was reading the book, writing the book, a CERN physicist conceded in a panel discussion one year later in Berlin that he had considered the Higgs signal weak at the time. I don't need to read because he says, why the hell didn't he stand up and say so? And was he the only one among 6,000 collaboration members? Where were the others? And they're only collaborating because they want to be part of the fame. They want to be part of the fame of finding a new unicorn. So this answers, hopefully, part of the question of, oh, you call them unicorns. Uh, you know, you say that. You never tell us about it, Dave. I told you today. I didn't tell you today. Alexander Unsiger tells you in this book, The Higgs Fake. And, <laughs> and of course, uh, we, we want to, uh, well, where is The Higgs Fake? Right here. There it is. The Higgs Fake. And it's a must book. It must read for you. And remember what I say. Don't take my word for it. Don't take other people's word for it. Read read about it read what people are doing read about the actions read about their arguments don't read that someone's opinion says that the that my opinion that it's unicorn so your question about whether it's unicorns and what other are our new models are unicorns it's a good question but the answer comes from read it yourself and alexander unsaker gives you a book right here that's really thin, that allows you to read about particle physics and find out for yourself why it is a unicorn world. Not because he says it, but because of what they do, the techniques that they use, the people involved, who doesn't know who, what's doing who, whatever. You can decide, use your brain, this intuitive idea, this gut feeling you have that big science is screwing us over just like big money is, big banks, uh, big politics, big all over the place. You're right. And I'm trying to help you. And remember, stay critical, stay thinking. I'm Dave DeHilser. I'm your science therapist trying to get you to be science woke. And this book will get you more woke than ever, especially with particle physics. Ciao for now.